to be used of you in Jesus name. Amen. I'd like that we turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter number 25. And as to read the scripture verse number 31 very quickly to scripture verse number you can read all the way but uh, I think we will stop at uh, verse 40. Matthew 25, 31. The subtitle to on my Bible from there is the judgment. But let's read. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations and uh, he shall separate them one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the gods. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the gods on the left. Then shall the king say to them on his right, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Verse 35. For I was an angered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave you drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee seek or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say to them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Our message for the day is especially focused on scripture verse number 36 I was naked and you clothed me and that's the title of our message I was naked and you clothed me today as we gather here we want to reflect on this great teaching of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ he says, I was naked and you clothed me. This is a simple statement, yet very powerful. And it holds a deep call to compassion and action. How does God want us to respond to the call of compassion? What lessons did Jesus want to teach his disciples when he, gave this, when he gave this account? And by extension, what is it that God wants us to learn today in August of 2023? What is it that God wants us to learn today? There are many things that we can get out of this portion of scripture. As a matter of fact, it's important we began reading scripture verse number 31. And it shows us that a day is coming when not just Christians, but the entire world, all the nations of this world, will stand before the judgment seat of God. 
Sometimes we live as if we don't care. Many people indeed live just to please themselves. They live for the moment. They want to gratify themselves. But we ought to live in such a way knowing that a day is coming when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and sit upon the throne of his glory. And that nations shall be gathered before him. The good, the bad, the ugly, all of them. The polite, the cruel, all of them will stand before the judgment seat of God. And on that day, scripture tells us that he will divide people the way a shepherd divides the sheep from the gods. There are only two groups of people. Only two. Those that please God and those that don't. And you are either on this side or on the other side. But I know, I know, sometimes we are on this side, sometimes we are on that side. Sometimes we are on this side, sometimes we are on that side. But... This passage tells us something very interesting. That it is the little decisions that we make that will tip the balance. That will make you be on that side instead of this side. And so we learn something here and I want to bring one of the main lessons that I want us to get out of this message I was naked and you clothed me. Number one, a need to recognize the dignity of every person. We ought to understand that every human being, big or small, tall or short, white or black, Of course, I know you are not black. And neither are those we call white men. Neither are they white. Most of them are just like, are they, what are they, pink? I don't know. You know, colors and me don't go very well, but you, you're just a little not black. But we all, every human being has dignity. Every human being. We all came from God. We all have the image of God. Every human being has worth and dignity before God. Every human being has worth, value, value. Every person is of value to God. Every person has dignity from God. It does not matter. Career doesn't count. The image of God does. When God was making man, he said, let's make man in our own image and after our own likeness. And every human being, every last one of them, whether you like them or you don't, whether they treat well or they don't, they have the image of God. And that is something we must never forget. Again, we need to understand that when Jesus speaks of clothing the naked, he speaks not only of physical clothing, but also he is addressing the vulnerabilities and the sufferings of fellow human beings. When you see someone in need, when you see someone vulnerable, when you see someone who has a need in their life. What do you do about that? Because we are talking about every human being having dignity and worth. So Jesus wants us to see beyond superficial differences and embrace the shared humanity that unites us all. Our acts of compassion. 
like providing clothing, acknowledging the dignity of the recipient, that counts to God. God cares how we treat fellow human beings. I know you may not like them, you may not like how they treat you. Sometimes you may not even like the religion they are in. You may not appreciate the part of the world where they come from and what generally people in that area behave or treat people from your area. But understand this, every human being has dignity and worth. Treat them as such and God will be happy with you. Number two, need to respond to the needs of people. There's a need for us to respond positively to the needs of others. In James chapter number two, we can turn our Bibles there, ties very well with a portion of scripture that we've just read in Matthew. In James chapter number two, and reading scripture verse number 14 to 17, we read, what does it profit my brethren Though a man say that he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? Verse 15. We, not, we need to note this very clear. If a brother or a sister, if a brother or a sister, do you know who a brother is? Do you know who a sister is? A brother or a sister is a fellow human being. Since we have already said that they are created in the image of God. They bear in them the image of God. They bear worth and dignity. Now if a brother or a sister be naked. And destitute of daily food. And one of you say unto him, go in peace. May the Lord appear for you. Be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding he give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? What does it profit? Even so, faith. If it be, if it has no wax, is dead being alone. These scriptures challenge us to move beyond mere words. I love you. Oh, may God perform a miracle for you. We are with you. Our thoughts are with you. Our prayers are with you. Yeah, pray as much as you do. Think as much as you Yes, let your thoughts be with us. No problem. But if you stop at that, that is faith without actions. It is dead. We ought to move beyond mere words and have a faith that is demonstrated through Needs through deeds, through actions. The call to cloth the naked is a call to engage with the practical needs of the most vulnerable members of our society. Rarely will you be needed to help people that are well up? And I know even well up people have their own needs, so in those areas where they are vulnerable, God would like you to help, but 
Help is always given where help is needed. Our faith comes alive. Your faith will come alive only when you respond to the cries of those who lack whatever they lack, whatever basic necessities that they need. But when you arise and respond to the cries of those that are in lack and in want, that is when your faith comes alive. As followers of Christ, we are called to be agents of change. To change situations for people. To change... Uh, if someone is in trouble, to change that situation, stop them from having that trouble, suffering, make life better for other human beings. That is what Christianity is all about. Compassion. To be empathetic. To be touching by the feelings of others and the needs of others and to do something about it. That is what God wants us to do, my dear brethren. Advocating for justice to those who don't have it, to meet the needs of the marginalized or the suffering, that is the call of God. Not just, we are with you. We are praying for you. Well, it's okay you are praying. What else are you doing in addition to prayer? You know, it's like this. Someone is sick. And all you are doing is praying. Well, there is something known as a hospital, my friend. There are people God has gifted to diagnose diseases and prescribe medicine sufficient and appropriate for certain cases. I believe in divine healing, but I also believe in God working through the utilization of appointed means. If a house is on fire, don't call the medical doctor, call the fire brigade. Hallelujah. Because God will work through the utilization of appointed means. If, if there is someone sick in the house, call the ambulance. And the ambulance will come. And inside that ambulance will be emergency nurses and doctors. That's what is supposed to happen. Prayer alone, without action, is of no help. And many people are dying today because Christians are not getting what Jesus is talking about, what James was talking about. Go well, be warm, be comforted. May an angel appear for you. Be the angel that is appearing. Hallelujah. Be that angel that you are praying to appear. Number four. Or number three. Cultivate. Cultivate. That farming word. Cultivate a heart of compassion. Cultivate a heart of compassion. Colossians chapter number three. Colossian. Where is Colossian in the Bible? After what, children? After 
Colossians chapter number 3, scripture verse number 12 to 14. Put on therefore, put on therefore, put on therefore, cultivate therefore in your lives. Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies. Kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Let me have a reading of translation. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 to 14. Since God chose you to be the holy people He loves, you must, you must, clothe yourself with. Tender heart at mercy, kindness, kindness humility, humility, gentleness, gentleness and, patience. and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults, each other's faults and, forgive anyone who you. and forgive anyone who offends you. Now, that I know forgiveness is a big problem to many people, but listen to me. God expects you to forgive. Those who have wronged you. That's what God expects. Nothing short of that. There is nothing outside. I mean, nothing short of that. God expects you to forgive. I know it's hard. I know you don't want it. I know you even don't like the sound of the words forgive. But God wants you to forgive all the same. And once you forgive, stop telling us a story. Stop narrating what they did if you are forgiven. Forgive and forget. Forgive and treat them as if they never wronged you. I know they did very bad. I know, I know, I know. But God says, forgive. Yes? Remember the Lord forgave you. So you must forgive others. You must. Hello? I say forgive. And stop treating people on the basis of what they did to you. Now, make the difference. Cultivate a heart of compassion. See, clothing the naked is not just about material provision. It's about also cultivating a heart of compassion. Apostle Paul instructs the Colossian church to clothe themselves with compassion, with kindness, with humility, and with love. Clothe yourself with. To clothe yourself with. When you clothe yourself, whatever clothes you are wearing, that's the first thing we see. So when we look at you, do we see compassion first? When we look at you, do we see kindness first in your actions? When we look at you, do we see humility, humbleness of mind? Do we see humility or we see pride? When we look at you, do we see love? When we exhibit these qualities, compassion, kindness, humility, love, we become vessels, conduits of God's mercy and grace. When God wants to help, he can use us. He can pass through us because we are now conduits. We are vessels through which God's love and mercy can pass through. How many people have you deleted from your phone book because of something they did to you? If we have those people's names, ask us, we will give them to you so that you restore your relationship with them. 
I cannot understand Christians who cannot forgive. I don't understand them. Well, the truth is they are not Christians. That is a simple conclusion. Our willingness, our willingness to extend a helping hand to others reflects the character of Christ within us. Our willingness to extend a helping hand to those that are in need, especially those that have previously dealt badly with us. That reflects the character of Christ within us. And on that note, I know that there are not many of us that are a reflection of the character of Christ. Compassion, compassion, compassion should be our guiding principle in life, prompting us, prompting us to actively seek out opportunities to alleviate suffering and bring hope to those that are in need. Compassion, compassion should be the guiding principle our guiding principle in life. Number four, as I bring us to, to the tail end of uh, our sharing here today. Number four, what is it that God wants us to do? God wants us to copy, to copy, to emulate Christ's love through action. To copy Christ. To do as Christ does. To emulate Christ's love through action. First John chapter 3. Verse 16. To 18. And I will read this also from the New Living Translation. But here is the authorized King James. But it says, Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. And we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. We ought. But whoso has this world's goods and seeth his brother have need, but shutteth up his bowels of compassion from him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? Verse 18. My dear children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. New Living Translation. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we ought also to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. If, if someone has money to live well like you, some of us, you know, we are not living badly, but you know, if you, you, know you know how we are. Got money, my friends. Yes? And sees a brother and a sister not having as much as we do, but is in need, but shows no compassion. Now, how can the love of God be in such a person? How? Verse 18. Dear children. Let's not just, let's not just say this is, this is brother so and so. This is my brother so and so. This is sister so and so. We, we, we are in the same fellowship. Let's not just love in word. Let's not just love in word. Yes? 
Let us show the truth of our love by actions. In the same way Jesus laid down his life for us, we are called to sacrificially love others. The Apostle John reminds us that love is not just words, but is demonstrated through action. Clothing the naked becomes a tangible expression of Christ's love to a hurting world. Our faith is validated. Our faith is validated when we put love into action, meeting the needs of those around us. As we engage in acts of compassion, we become living testimonies of God's transformative power and grace. I read a story of a woman, a good woman, a good sister, the story went like this. Once an angel whispered to a good woman in the morning and told her that her Lord would be coming to our house that day. Can you imagine? An angel whispering to you, Jesus today will come to your house. And so this woman began to get, get herself ready and to prepare things. She swept a compound, cleaned everything, made a nice meal, loving meal, set a table for two, you know, herself and the Lord. And she watched eagerly all day for his coming. But in the evening, a poor little child came to our door and begged shelter for the night. But the woman was thinking so much of our Lord that she only gave the child a little money and sent him into the gathering darkness. But as the child turned, walking away, The child grew beautiful, fair, and she started having glory, glory, and then as she faded into the darkness, without brightness, she heard the words, Behold your Lord. He had come, but he had not been invited. He had come, but he was not welcome. He had come, but he had just been given a small little money to go because this woman was keenly and seriously thinking about our Lord. I was naked, but you did not clothe me. Oh, I was naked, and you clothed me. And then they will ask, Lord, when was it that we saw you naked? Then he will tell them, for as much as you did to the least of these, my brethren, you did it to me. We need to walk thoughtfully through life. Thoughtfully through life. When you see people, don't be so rude the way you have been. Consider 
Doesn't the book of Hebrews tell us that some have even entertained angels and awares? You never know the next stranger you will meet. Whether he is a real stranger or whether he is the Lord. You never know. Let's not fail the small little tests that will be brought before us. If you pass those small little tests, it may just tip the balance and you find yourself on the right hand side. And then you will be told, enter ye into the kingdom prepared for you from before the foundation of the world. Or maybe you fail the test And uh, you go to go to the left. I don't even know what they will go and do on the other side, but you can read your Bible. Yeah? Let us pray. Precious and everlasting Father, King of the universe, I know it is not easy to always do right. I know it's not always easy to be what you want us to be to people. But I want to ask that you give us a realization that every good deed we do, we do to you. Help us, Lord, to have bowels of compassion and to reflect your character to everyone that we come into contact with. Help us, Lord, to be peacemakers. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to know what we ought to do as we walk this life. Be glorified, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. See you next time. Thank you for your prayers. God requires more.